Amen, and good morning. How are we doing today? Amen. There we go. Thank you all very much. Amen. Just want to welcome everyone here to CFC. Glad you could be here with us today. How many of you are expecting something from the Lord today? Amen. We, we expect the Lord to move mightily here today. Amen. I just want to remind everyone that uh, if it's your first time here, we just want to welcome you. First time watching online, we just want to welcome you. And on that thing, if uh, for you to stay up to date of what's going on in church and things, uh, we do have uh, this in your bulletin. You can scan that QR code. We have a, a Facebook page, a website, prayer requests online. You could give online, a YouTube online, so you could stay up to date with all those things through social media. Uh, uh, we also got going on tomorrow night, uh, my Sister's Hearts Book Club is going to be meeting uh, tomorrow at uh, 5 to 8 in the cafe there. Uh, the book they're uh, going to be discussing is... Uh, God's at War, which would be the next slide there, brother. There you go, God's at War. So even if you didn't read the book and you just want to show up, see, see how they're, they're going to discuss the topics in the book, what was going on, you're more than welcome to do that. And I also want to say thank you to Brother Darren. He's running sound and computer this morning. So I want to thank him for that. Uh, also, uh, this week on Tuesday will be a uh, women's Bible study, Lies Women's Women Believe. That's Tuesday at 6 p.m. in the uh, church cafe. Then on Wednesday, we have our uh, discipleship class. Uh, we have Extreme Youth and Kids Club uh, going on that night. Our discipleship class right now, what we're doing is we're uh, talking about answers to prayers, uh, discussing about what the Bible says about prayer and different things like that. And as we pray in the service also at toward the end so uh final thing is my sister's hearts women's ministry meeting will be friday may 28th they're having a tea party and sister malloy gilbo is going to be speaking that night oh and, and one, one other thing our men's fellowship we're going to be going to spars in uh the zalman uh the spar seafood restaurant we'll be leaving church at 11 a.m on saturday may 29th uh, we will be taking the church van for those that feel comfortable riding in the church van. If you don't feel comfortable yet uh, being in an enclosed area like that, you could just meet us down there, and we're going to have a good lunch. How many of you love some good fried catfish? And oh, amen. So I just want to encourage you for that. We just want to wish anyone having a birthday this week, happy birthday, between now and next Sunday. Anyone in here right now? I know it's my grandson BB's birthday. They're not here yet. Uh, he's six, already 16 years old. Can't believe that. Uh, it seems like just yesterday he was born. So anyone else having a birthday this week? No? Okay. What about anniversaries? Anyone have an anniversary between now and next Sunday? Just want to wish you happy anniversary. Oh, I thought I seen a hand. Nope. All right. All right. Well, if you would, uh, we're going to go ahead and receive our tithes and offerings this morning. Just before we pick it up, I just want to let you know how you can give. Uh, you could give, if you're not here and you want to mail it in to the post office, you go mail it to Christian Fellowship Church, post office box 1427, La Rosa, Louisiana, 7373, 70373. Or you could give online at welcometocfc.com, or you could text to give. Uh, just text uh, area code 985-304-2442. But the best way to give is to be here in the presence of God in his house this morning. Amen. So let's stand to our feet. As we have, uh, as we read our scriptures this week about giving, it's from Psalms 19, verse 19 says, Reverence for the Lord is good, it will continue forever. The judgments of the Lord are just, they are always fair. Psalms 33, 8 says, Worship the Lord, all the earth, and honor him, all the peoples of the world. And lastly, Psalms 115, verses 11 through 13 says, Trust in the Lord, all you that worship him. He helps you and protects you. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless the people of Israel and all the priests of God. He will bless everyone who honors him, the great and small alike. So if you would take your offering, hold it in your right hand, and repeat after me this morning. Say, as I give in today's offering, I commit myself to walk in the fear of the Lord with humility and sincerity and to respect, honor, 
and obey the Lord, God Almighty. I repent of any independent attitude or pride and I ask for God to keep me and bless me in every way. I give today with total confidence in my God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Along the front, we got three of these blue baskets. If you would, just make your way out your seat and place it in there. And amen. How many of you are ready to worship the Lord this morning? <laughs> Amen. Oh, and look, th there's B.B., sweet 16. He's, it's his golden birthday today. B.B., happy birthday, golden birthday. Amen. Amen. That's the one responsible for making me old. I became a grandpa. <laughs> Amen. Our call to worship this morning is from Romans chapter 15, verses 9 through 13, says this, And moreover, that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles, I will sing praises to your name. Verse 10 says, Again it says, Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, let all the people extol him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will rise and to rule over the nations. In him the Gentiles will hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So as we get ready to worship this morning, I want to let you know the altars are open. If you want to come worship in the altars, you're more than welcome to. But as we get ready to worship, Father, we just come to you today. Father, I just pray that your spirit would fill this place today. For your word says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And Father, I just pray uh, today as we're going to minister in your word that those that are held in bondage today would be set free, Father God, from every trap and snare that the enemy has placed in their life. And Father, as we get ready to worship you here today, we lift up your name, Father God. We praise you for what you've done and what you're going to do. And we worship you for who you are today. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, everyone says, Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together and worship the Lord.
sing Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Yes, Jesus. Jesus, the only one who could ever say he's worthy.
I just kept hearing that there's a song in there that I know that says, Lord, let me never lose my wonder. And I just kept hearing that all week. And I said, God, that's my prayer. Let me never stop wondering about your goodness. Let me never stop being curious about how awesome you are. Let me never get to a plateau where I don't, where I've reached, oh, I know everything. Let us never, let that be your prayer, God. Let us never lose our wonder about you, Jesus, about your wonderful mercies and your wonderful glories that you do. Let us never stop wondering about how good he is, about his miracles, about his goodness, about his heart, that we never stop seeking after him. Let me, Lord, let me never, let me never lose my wonder about you, Jesus always be curious and continue to seek after you God till the day you take me home let me never get complacent Jesus Lord set our hearts ablaze on fire for you Lord fill our hearts fill our hearts with wonder fill my heart God with what you desire. Jesus, let me never stop wondering about you, God. Because there is no one like Jesus. There's never gonna be anyone like you, Lord. whatever it is you're going through or whatever it is God is trying to take you through you're not allowing God to have full 100% to do what it is he wants to do like the last song says no matter how many trials come when they come like a flood he's still going to have the victory he still has the final say but it's for us to lift our hands and say God take it. God, you take control to let our hands go from the situation and let God's hands come and begin to work. Begin to work through every single detail, every single fine detail of whatever it is, situation. Remember, he is the potter and we are the clay. Amen. Let him take the lead today.
will sing the more I seek you. The more I seek you. Yes, yes, let it be your heart today. The more I find you. The more I find you. The more I love you. Sing, I want to sing. in this world. Sometimes the more you find out about somebody, the more 
the image that you had of them, you see that they're more human than you thought. Uh, but God's so the opposite. The more you know Him, the more you find Him, the more you'll fall in love with Him. The more you'll see how good He is. That He's the, he's the only answer to everything we need in life. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated this morning. Also, I thank Darren up there, but I also want to say a special thank you to Aliska. Please pray for her. She has a sore throat and struggling. You would never know when you heard her, but uh, she was talking like the Godfather when she came in this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But God is so good. Amen. Amen. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap of praise again this morning. Uh, before I get started this morning, we want to dismiss our kids, three, four, and five, to their class. Um, but uh, we have a special treat for a few minutes this morning. Uh, Brittany, uh, Sheremy, <laughs> Bankston was coming out. <laughs> Brittany Sheremy now, the BBC, Brittany Bankston Sheremy, has graduated from Nichols 48 hours ago, maybe, somewhere around there. And she has great plans for next year that I want her to come share with you because I, I think we should all support exactly what she's getting ready to do this world needs can I tell you something can I tell you that as kids get in college and come out of college they're the next leaders they're the next how many of you know we better make sure they find Jesus and lead make rules and laws in this country by the precepts of God and not by what culture is saying is okay amen so Brit Miss Brittany would you come on up here and Share with us. Thank y'all. I love you guys. I love this church. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I'm Brittany. I grew up in this church since I'm born. <laughs> so it's so good to see so many familiar faces. Um, and just growing up here was so formational for me in my faith, in my walk with Jesus. Um, and I'm so excited about what God is calling me to do this next year. Um, kind of like he was saying, college students, that group, investing into that age and that group of people is so important. They're our next leaders. They're our next business owners in our communities. And I just feel like God has called me to them. Um, going into college was such a big transition for me to decide who I wanted to be. Um, and I got really involved with this campus ministry, Chi Alpha, whenever I started college, and they just poured into me. They walked alongside me. They discipled me. They showed me what it meant to have a relationship with Jesus, and I believe that what God did in me, he wants to do through me. So <laughs> this next year, I'm going to be doing a campus missionary internship at Nichols with Chi Alpha, um, and I'm going to be able to do the same thing that they did for me. Um, whenever you think of college students, you know, you might think of people going to school and getting a degree and starting out their lives and their jobs, or you also might think of, you know, the stereotypical college experience. People are going out and partying and getting wild, and, you know, that's a reality. <laughs> you know, that is the majority of college students. There are thousands of students, even just at Nichols, close to our community, who are walking around lost and broken. They don't know Jesus. They don't have a purpose. They're hurting. They're in pain. I've met countless students who are going through this. There was this one girl I met on campus. Her name was Danae. I met her at a waffles and karaoke night that they were doing on campus. And whenever I met her, she was hurting. She was struggling with anxiety, depression. She, she grew up in church, but she didn't know much about what it meant. She didn't know what it meant to follow Jesus. She didn't feel like she had accepted him as her savior. And through building a relationship with her and getting to hang out with her and inviting her to come to my Bible study that I was doing in my dorm and just spending one-on-one -on -one time with her talking to her, hey, this is what it looks like to follow Jesus. This is how you read your Bible. This is how you pray and talk to God. Um, in my dorm living room, she made the decision to follow Jesus and accept him as her savior. Um, yeah, that deserves an applause. <laughs> it was one of the coolest things I've ever gotten to be a part of. And now, fast forward two years later, Danae is leading her own Bible study, discipling other girls on campus. Yeah, it's so cool. 
So I'm really excited. There's thousands of other students like Danae who need to be reached. And it makes me think of in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, Jesus says he looked out to the crowds and he had compassion on them because they were harassed and hurting like sheep without a shepherd. And I believe God has called me to go out on Nichols campus and find the lost lambs of God and be their shepherd and walk alongside them and disciple them. So to do that, <laughs> thank you. To do that, I'm doing a campus missionary internship with Chi Alpha. It's a campus ministry at Nichols. What that's gonna look like, I'm gonna be continuing to lead a life group Bible study. I'm gonna continue to meet with girls one-on-one -on -one and disciple them. I'm gonna be taking online theology courses to get my credentials with the Assemblies of God. Um, I'm gonna be taking preaching labs and preaching at our large group worship services. And there's so many other things that I'm gonna be doing that I'd love to share with you guys. Um, and to do that, I'm raising up a team of supporters who can partner with me in prayer and financially through monthly giving so that I can do this as my full-time job this year and I can just really focus on investing in these college students. I'm just so excited about what God's gonna do. I'm so excited to have people partner with me and have a direct impact in what I'm gonna be doing. Um, so if you're interested and you would like to talk to me more about it, more details on what I'm gonna be doing, how you can partner with me, how that all works, I'm gonna be in the back after service and I'd love to talk to you. Thank you guys. Amen. I can't believe that's E.E. -E. My granddaughter couldn't say her name, Brittany. She used to call her E.E. E.E. -E. E -E. Amen. But I think that's, uh, we are going to partner with her as a church and support her through missions and things. So uh, we will get more information with her uh, as it goes on that whatever you donate, you could donate to church and we'll send her a check, financial check each month to help her out with that. Because I, I truly believe if we don't reach this generation, we're going all going to hell in a handbasket this world if we don't. You know, we need to reach out to this world. Amen. So if you would, let's take out our notes this morning. I just want to uh, share a message God put on my heart this morning called uh, Freedom of Forgiveness. Amen. So let's just go to the Lord in prayer as we get started today. Father, I just come to you right now, and I lift up every person in the sound of my voice. Father, I just pray for them right now, Father God, that you search inside of each and every one of us today, Father God. Father, I just pray that each and every one of us could uh, let go of the things that we may be holding inside that is actually harming us. Father God, that is hindering our walk and relationship with you. Father, I pray that as we look at your word this morning, Father God, I pray that every blind eye be open to the spiritual truths of your word. I pray that every deaf ear be open to the spiritual truths of your word. I pray that every uh, blinded mind could comprehend your word this morning. I pray that every heart would be softened to receive your word this morning. I pray that you give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation so we may know you better. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says amen, amen. Again, this message is entitled freedom of forgiveness, and um, we'll, we have that slide, Brother Darren, if you'd put up the uh, beginning your journey here, and I, I've men mentioned before uh, on our back wall, we, 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 it, it's our path in life that we need to go through, we need to connect with God and his family, so, so we could be rooted, so if, if you don't get saved, nothing's going to change. All right, and that's where it begins, getting saved, but connecting with God's family and, and that a support system. But then the next thing back there, who knows what it says? Well, I'm going to have to give you all a test on this from now on. The second part is once you connect with God and his family is to grow in God's character. Thank you, Logan. Logan had it right. Amen. Amen. But it's to grow in God's character. And that's what I want you to realize is that we need more of him in us and less of us. What, what the world has damaged us, we're damaged goods. I, I like to say the way that God formed us, but sin deformed us, but Jesus transformed us. God wants to put your life back together, put the broken pieces of your life back together. And how many of you trust God? How many of you really trust God? 
Can I tell you something? He's going to tell you something today to do that won't seem like what you want to do. That doesn't make sense. But can I tell you, when God's going to speak the truth to you today, and, and the reason I left your notes, you'll notice today, has red in it. That's where Jesus was speaking. I wanted you to make sure you know this is Jesus speaking, the Son of God. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And some things, what I'll say today, never saying it's easy to do, but it's what we need to do if we want to grow in in God and uh, grow in that relationship. You see, the enemy has painted an image uh, of with unforgiveness that you have a right. You because people done horrible things to other people. You know, uh, again, maybe sexually molested, physically abused, mentally abused. And you almost feel like you have a right to hold something against that person. They've damaged you and hurt you so much. And the enemy has painted that image. Yeah, hold on to that. But reality is, that is one thing that's killing you from the inside. And think of it as a, like if I slice my arm open and I'm about to bleed to death and something's happening and I tell them, no, leave it. I want to remember what that person done. I want to be able to show what this person done to me. Who's hurting? Me. It's damaging me. And that's what Jesus tells us in Scripture is that unforgiveness is hurting you, not the other person. The enemy makes you think that that holding that unforgiveness, you have a right. But can I tell you what's really happening is he's giving you a glass of poison and the poison's the unforgiveness. And you're drinking it thinking it's hurting them. Brother Allen said many years ago, unforgiveness is a prison cell. doesn't matter which side the gate you're on, you're both in prison. Because the only way you keep them there is by you staying there guarding the door. You just decide on which side the gate you're on, but you're not free. You, you're just, and can I say this too? Unforgiveness is an area of our heart that we refuse to give to God. We say, God, you stay out of this part. This is mine. They've offended me, and I have this right, and I'm not letting them go. See, God is all about forgiveness. If we are to take on the character of God, it doesn't mean you approve or, uh, you know, of what this person done or, or people have done to hurt you in life, but you are to forgive. It doesn't mean you forget. But forgiveness is treating your womb. Forgiveness is the only way your womb can heal. And the only way you can move forward. And so many people are damaged in life uh, because of so many things that happen to them. Again, it could be bef- before they got saved or after. We, people still hurt us after we get saved. Okay, can I, can I tell you a secret? Just because you get saved doesn't mean you're not going to have trouble in this world. Just because you get saved doesn't mean that everything's going to be peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and and a good glass of milk. Life still happens. There's still other people that will hurt you. So when we're talking about this, what I need you to understand is that sometimes, as uh, Jesus told Lazarus when he came out the grave, he told everybody, take off his grave clothes. Sometimes we bring stuff from our past into this world, into this new life that we need to get rid of that stinks. And Part of that is some of the hurts we had in our past and, and unforgiveness we have in our past. And some of it may have happened since you've been saved. So I, as we get started, I just want to, uh, you, to, you to pray. You're not here by accident today. God wants to help you to grow. God wants to help you to be set free. And uh, uh, part of the journey is starting the journey. Can I tell you, when you get saved, it's a journey. It's the journey of the rest of your life where you go. So, Darren, if you put that title back up again, this is what I want you to see. This image is freedom of forgiveness. People have been in chains and bound so long. You've been saved. But you know that spot inside. A person's name comes up, a thought comes up, and it just makes you sick. And God wants to heal you of that. Can I tell you, Jesus went to the cross so you didn't have to? Uh, uh, experience that and notice what it says here we'll we'll go to our notes here 
the freedom of forgiveness. And we, we talked about this a while, a while back, this scripture. But Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has appointed, anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor and he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoner. And you see, you'd say, well, I'm never in prison. If you're holding unforgiveness, you are in prison. And Jesus says, I've, came, I've come to tell you to proclaim that you can be free. But the problem is, uh, he's telling you, is you hold the key. It's up to you if you unlock the door. But you hold the key. It's up to you. Jesus says, I've paid for it to, to let that go. And this is where we want you to uh, get hold of all this. And hopefully you can see how the enemy has painted that image that we've bought into that I'm never going to You don't know what that person done. I'll never forgive them. And we buy into that. And in a way, it almost makes us feel good, like, like we're, we're doing them something. But in reality, they're still controlling you. See, when you forgive them, you release their control on your life, and you say, you know what? You no longer affect me. Because as long as I, as long as I let you control me, I'm still being hurt. But the second I let it go, it breaks those chains, and you have no more control on me. John 8, 32 says this. Then you will know the what? Truth. And what will set you free? The truth. Can I let you know I'm about to share the truth of God's word with you? And it's only the truth that will set you free? As ridiculous as it may sound, it's only the truth that will set you free in your life? So notice what Matthew 5, 9 says. This is Jesus speaking from the... Uh, Beatitudes. Notice what it says. What's that first word? Blessed. Blessed. What does that word mean? That, that word actually translates happy or uh, peaceful. In other words, Jesus is saying happy and peaceful are those. Now notice what he says. Blessed are the what? Say that again. Peace what? Let's separate that word into two. The first one is blessed is the peace what peace notice he didn't say peace keepers see a lot of times we read over that so fast and we say we're just trying to keep the peace but jesus says no 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 no. blessed is the ones who make peace blessed is the peacemaker and then notice what it says for these they will be called the children of God. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna read some things this morning that I, I didn't like reading them. But he's saying the peacemakers will be called the sons of God. I was thinking for a second. We've all sinned against God and we're we're gonna uh getting more scriptures about that how many of you know we were at fault in the relationship with god as humans god never messed up god never done it, us anything how many of you know he's the one that wanted to make peace with us we ran from him our whole life but god is the peace maker so if we want to be, get the character of God in our life, we have to become the peacemakers. So look what it says here in Mark eleven twenty five, 25. Jesus is speaking again. He says, and when you stand praying, what's those next three words? If you hold. If you hold hold anything against anyone forgive them in other words whatever someone has done you he doesn't leave anything out if anyone holds and who's holding it in other words 
Jesus is trying to tell you, you need to let that go. Let the poison go. Let it go because it's killing you. He says, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, then listen to this next thing. So that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. I didn't like reading that. Jesus is speaking and he says, if you hold anything against anybody, forgive them so your Father will forgive you. How many know there is a biblical principle of reaping and sowing? Could it be that if we sow unforgiveness, we'll reap unforgiveness? Let me just read, I added this, and it'll be up on the screen. I want you to understand, I wasn't going to share this this morning, but I ended up adding it this morning. Let's let's delve into this a little further. This will be in Matthew 18, 21 through 35. It'll be up on the screen. I'm going to read it kind of quick. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? In other words, something's happened to me. It's not that I've done something to everybody, anyone else. But can I tell you something? We've all hurt people, and we've all been hurt by people. We're not innocent in, in, in ourselves. We need forgiveness. And he says this. And the, and he says this. He says, um, how many times must I forgive my uh, brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times. Can I tell you, Peter was trying to pat himself on the back there. Saying up to seven times. Because you see, Jewish law required you forgive three times. So Peter's like, hey, seven? Huh? Yeah, I'm so spiritual, Jesus. Jesus answered him, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. And actually, most translations read 70 times seven, which is 490 times. In other words, Jesus says there's, it really should be an endless supply. Then he goes on to say this. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven, you better pay attention when you read that. The kingdom of heaven is like, he's telling you, he's giving you a, 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 what heaven looks like. He says the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants that he wanted to make peace with them, settle these accounts, right? God sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us, and those that accept him, the account settled. But notice what he goes on to say. Verse 24, As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Uh, listen, 10,000, a lot, a big sin. So, you know, some of us has more sins than others, things like that in our life, but God's willing to forgive you of all your sins. And verse 25 says, since he was not able to pay, and think about that, where Jesus told them, man, this is impossible salvation. You're not able to pay for it. So what what happens? He says, uh, since he was unable to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children uh, and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before God and said, be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay you back. Every, I will pay you back everything. Then the servant's master done what? Took pity on us. God so loved us that he did what? Canceled the debt. See, God took pity on us and sent his son to die on the cross so our debt could be canceled because we couldn't pay for it. We couldn't do it. He says, but when the servant went out and found one of his servants uh, who owed him a hundred, now he owed, he just got forgiven 10,000. And he finds somebody that owes him 100. Oh, how the tide changes. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell on his knees. Again, Jesus is painting a picture of heaven. He fell on his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, I'll pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown in the prison until he could pay back his debt. 
When the other servants saw what happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that happened. Then the master called the servant in and says this, You wicked servant. He said, I canceled all your debt and yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I have had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. And in verse 35 says, This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from the heart. That's some strong words and warnings that he's given us. So when we look at this, this, this verse, Mark eleven twenty five 25 again, when we stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you. I want to just stop here and share a moment. When my dad had his heart attack in 2011-ish, right around, or I mean beginning of the year, after he had his first heart attack, he lived for nine more months before he passed away. When, well, 2012, he passed away in, in November of 2012. But it was about nine months, I believe, from his original heart attack. When he had that first heart attack, in the hospital, in a matter of days, he flatlined five times that they brought him back to life. One of those times, he told us that Jesus appeared to him and told him, peace, peace, peace. Three times. You see, my brother and his sister, my brother, my dad and his sister weren't speaking at the time. Things happen in life and, you know, and if you knew my dad, you either was on his good side or you were on his bad side. There was no in between. And she had moved to the bad side. And he refused to talk to her. He refused to forgive her. But he knew exactly what Jesus meant. The day, a couple of days after he came home from the hospital, he called her to come over so he could forgive her. Ask for forgiveness. You see, I think there's something to this that is reality. That on his deathbed, heart stopped, that he sees the Lord appeared to him and say, peace, peace, peace. And he knew exactly what it was about. So I don't know what someone's done you. Horrible things happen. And, and look, I, I was raised, I had a great childhood and things. And, you know, the, the, the worst thing that happened to me was that my wife didn't put salt and meat in the beans. And I forgave her, you know, as long as she don't let it happen again. But listen, some of you may have had a horrible experience with parents. You may have been abused physically, mentally, sexually. You, you may have been hurt by a spouse or an ex-spouse. You know, a person you trusted that you were going to spend the rest of your life with and that maybe they were unfaithful and maybe everything turned around. Maybe children, you're having issues with your children and things like that, whoever it is business associates that you trusted and they just broke your trust. Let me even go a step further. Maybe some of us in here need to forgive ourselves. That you look and God, I, my past, I've done this and I just can't forgive myself. And you need to let it go. You need to let that go. Can I even take it as far as that some of us need to forgive God, although he didn't do anything wrong? But inside of you, maybe something tragic happened in your life, and, and some of the things we talked about, and you're, you're like, God, how and why did you let this happen to me? Couldn't you have stopped it? Maybe you, you've lost a child, and God, why you let this happen in my life? Maybe you've been sexually abused. God, why didn't you stop this person? And inside of you, it's 
almost you're angry with God. You love him, you trust him, but there's something you need to let go. And that's what we need to do because Satan wants you to hold on to that. Satan wants you to hold on to that poison of unforgiveness. Let's move to this next part here. And and I just put this down as an example for us, uh, which I mentioned a while ago, how God made peace with us. And if we are to have God's character, if the Holy Spirit's living in you, the fruit of the Spirit's love, joy, peace, compassion, all these things, it doesn't say unforgiveness. See, God's Spirit is a forgiving Spirit. He wants to forgive. So if anybody had the right to hold it against us, and not make peace, if anybody had a reason to not make peace, would be God not making peace with man. In other words, I created you, I gave you everything you wanted, but still you betray me. Still as Christians, us right now, we are unfaithful to him many times. He gave his son that died and was beaten on the cross, but yet we're still not totally sold out to him. If anybody has the right to not want to make peace, it would be him. Notice what it says in James 4, 4 and 5. He says, you adulterous people. And he's not talking about just marital adultery here. In other words, the adulterous people, he's talking about you unfaithful people. With all that God has done for you, with all he does, he says, you adulterous, unfaithful people to God. See, we are the bride of Christ. If you're born again, you're the bride of Christ. And God wants you to be faithful to him. And then it says, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Now, that word enmity actually means hatred and hostility. Being a friend of the world with the world has the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He says that is actually hatred toward God. And he says, therefore... If anyone chooses to be a friend of the world, becomes what? An enemy of God. An enemy of God. We are, in our lost states, enemies of God. So you're going to hear Jesus uh, later on in some of these scriptures says, pray for your enemies. See, Jesus, he doesn't just tell us what we need to do. He lived what we need to do. He lived the example and showed us what we need to do. So let's look at Isaiah 53, 3 and 6 again, as as we're laying this out, talking about being a peacemaker. This is what happened to Jesus. That God so loved the world that he sent his son to die for the forgiveness of our sins. And let's see how the world welcomed us. God's coming to make, sending his son to make peace with us. And let's just see how the world was so grateful to him. Isaiah 53, 3 and 6 says, we despised him. That's speaking about Jesus. We despised him and rejected him. Yet he endured suffering, and pain. No one would even look at him. We ignored him as if he was nothing. But he endured the suffering that should have been ours, the pain that, should, that we should have bore. And no, notice what this next verse says. In our arrogance and our self-righteousness, it says, and all the meanwhile, while he was suffering all this, All the while, we thought that his suffering was a punishment sent by God because, oh, how dare you say you are the Son of God. He's coming to die for us, and yet we're, oh. Verse 5, but because of our sins, he was wounded, beaten because of the evil we did. 
We are healed by the punishment he suffered, made whole by the blows he received. Then look at beginning of verse 6. All of us, say that, all of us were like sheep that were lost, each of us going his own way. But the Lord made the punishment fall on him, the punishment all of us deserve. See, God was the peacemaker. And now he asks us to be peacemakers. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. Jesus says this, then read, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Again, as we were talking a while ago, we reap what we sow. Now, does this mean a person can't be saved? I don't believe it goes that far. But I could tell you something, you're going to live a crippled life. You'll never fulfill what God has for you. And if it does mean that we couldn't be saved, wow, I'm, ta- I'm really taking this to the grave. Right? And, and how many times you've heard people, I'll never forgive them, I'll take it to the grave. You better watch what you say. Ephesians 4.32 says this, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you just as Christ God forgave you sister Leska if you start making your way up here brother Darren just dim these two lights up here because I want to share that last statement just as Christ forgave us we don't deserve his forgiveness we didn't earn his forgiveness but yet he was willing to give us forgiveness. And as you're a Christian, it says right here, be kind, compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as God forgave you. So if I don't forgive others as God forgave me, am I sinning against God? So how can I forgive like Jesus? First thing is the, my first step. Again, I've never, I'm, I'm not, I hope this doesn't come across like it's easy to do. Because really the only way you could do it is through Him. It's through Christ. He died to, to release me. But you, I'm giving you the key right now. I'm, re, I'm trying to help you realize that you have the key in your hand right now to release you out of that prison. Pray for those who hurt you. Look what it says here in Luke chapter 6, verse 27 and 28. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. And I'm going to pause here for a second. Because I want you to know, just like what I'm maybe telling you here today, is it's not what you want to hear. It's not making sense. To the Jewish people, what Jesus was saying was total opposite of what they were taught their whole life. They were taught a tooth for a tooth, an eye for an eye, a life for a life. And Jesus is saying, no, that's not the way it is. He says, you pray for your enemy. If we're a friend of the world, we are an enemy of God. As Jesus is up on that cross... He's looking down and people are spitting at him. The people he's uh, dying for, for their forgiveness, the people he's trying to be the peacemaker of are still spitting at him, humiliating him, screaming all these things to him. But yet he prays to the Father and says, Father, forgive them. Do you see how he sets the example for us? 
It's not that he's telling us some random thing. We actually see it in his life. See, none of them were being friendly to him. Oh, well, if they'd be friendly to me, Father, forgive them. But yet in the, his most agony, and even, it blows my mind even more, it was even in the time of when it was actually happening to him that he said, forgive them. He was still going through it. And he said, Father, forgive them. And some of us have been carrying around this thing for years and years. It happened many years ago, and I'm not downplaying what happened to him. But it's time to let it go. It's time to give it to the Lord so you can be healed, so you can be set free. Let's begin back in verse 27. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. It begins by praying for them. Look, it doesn't mean it just disappears. But the first step, the first step in the journey is beginning to pray for them. Praying for them begins to open the door. Not praying bad things for them. Not praying that they get killed. Not praying all this stuff. But it's praying for them. Praying for yourself. Say, Father, you know what, this is, what happened in my life, and I'll just forgive them. I pray, and it's my desire to forgive them. I know you, you know that it still hurts. That, I, that I'm having trouble letting it go. But I'll lift them up right now. Father, forgive them. Matthew 5, 43 and 45, through 45, Jesus says, You have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. This is where Jesus is radically changing their teaching that they all heard. Love your neighbor. Oh, simple. It's simple loving the people that love you. It's simple forgiving the people you love. But what about those who hurt you? What about those who are your enemy? I was an enemy of God. And who am I to say, Lord, let your mercy and grace be poured out on my life. But I refuse to let mercy and grace be poured out on theirs. Remember what we read about the servant? God's going to say, you want me to wipe your slate clean, all the sins in your life, but you're not going to forgive them. And again, Forgiving them is the heart of God. Wanting forgiveness. Forgiveness is treating your wound. It's not about making them feel better. It's about you. Don't carry it around anymore. Let it go. He came to set the prisoners free. You have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. And notice again in verse 45, he makes this statement. That you may be children of your Father in heaven. How many of you know when you surrender your life to God, he wants every part? And again, I'm going to mention that unforgiveness or whoever it may be is a part of your life you've never surrendered to God and never let him heal you're choosing to hold the poison God I give you everything else but I need this because all these wrongs they've done me how much they hurt me how much they damaged my life I have the right to hold on to it yes you do you have the right but it's killing me You also have the right to be healed and be set free. Don't allow them to keep you in prison. Second thing we need to do is for, to uh, how to forgive like Jesus is forgive as you have been forgiven. 
forgive as you have been forgiven. Even in the prayer Jesus is teaching the disciples, our call to prayer, he says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. Forgive us as we forgive. Forgive other people as Christ has forgiven you. Colossians 3, 12 and 13 says this, Therefore, as God's chosen people, you're born again, raise your hand. You're God's chosen people. So this is what he's telling you. As God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with this, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. See, this is all part of the fruit of the Spirit that's living in you. And then it says, verse 13, bear with each other. Bear with each other. It doesn't say just bear with them. Can I tell you something? People are bearing with you also. We've all hurt people. We've all been hurt by people. None of us are perfect. And, and I, I'll stand right here and say, I sincerely apologize if I ever hurt anybody in, in any way. If I've offended you in any way, I apologize. It never was my intent. And we have to know that God loves us and forgives us. And if anybody, I, I, I'm looking across this room and I don't hold anything against anybody. I don't. I couldn't, I could, I'd have to try and make something up. But I love you all. It says, by God's chosen people, holy, dearly loved, uh, clothe each other with compassion, kindness, and patience. Verse 13 again, bear with each other. And do what? Forgive how? One another. You know why I forgive someone? Because I know I need to. Who am I to ask for forgiveness but not give forgiveness? He says, forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And then verse 15 says, so then let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Let me stop there for a second. See, as long as I'm holding unforgiveness, I'm not a peacemaker. And instead of peace being in my heart, there's unforgiveness in my heart. See, only the peacemaker is say, God, God, I'm giving you. Here's the key. What keys do? Unlock. Open up. The key to you and me being healed is forgiving the other person. That opens the door. I'm giving it to God. Because that's the only way it can happen. It's through Him. It says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were what? Called to peace. And be thankful. You are called to peace and be thankful. So, what I want to do right now, I got a whole basket of nails here. If you're holding unforgiveness of any type, I'm not saying it's easy. What we're doing is taking the first step to forgiveness. That, that today, hopefully, at least I've made you understand that it is God's will that you forgive. And you're saying, you know what, God, I, I'm, I'm sorry I, I've held that part of my life from you. I'm sorry I've, I've not let you move in this part of my life. But what, I'm, what you're going to do is come grab one of these railroad spikes. You're going to walk up this stair and you're going to go put it at the foot of the cross. And this is what you're doing. You're saying, God, I know Jesus died to set me free. 
I know Jesus died so I don't have to be a prisoner to this hurt anymore. So Lord, here it is. This is my hurt. This is my abuse. This is my sexual abuse. This is my mental abuse. This is my physical abuse. This is how I've been cheated and lied to and all these hurts in my life. Father, I don't want to hang on to it anymore. I'm tired of it being a dagger in my heart. So I'm giving it to you and I'm placing it at the feet of the cross. Father, I'm no longer holding it, but I'm giving it to you. Once we remove it from our heart, the wound could begin to heal. But as long as I leave it there, it'll never heal. And can I tell you, that's exactly what the enemy wants. He wants you broken. He doesn't want you made whole. He wants this sticking right through your heart. Because he doesn't want you to have the character of God. He doesn't want you to do what God wants you to do. So in a second here, I'm going to ask you just come one at a time. Grab a spike, and before you grab it, I'm just going to anoint you with all. That represents the presence of God. Are you saying, God? Yeah. You take this spike, you go up this stair, right on this side. Let me walk, I'll show you. Come right here. And you spend as much time as you want in front of this cross. And you just lay it down at his feet. And say, you know what? I'm giving it to you, and I'm not taking it back. And you can walk, make your way down there. Those of you, if you're not going to be coming up to the front, I want you just to begin to go through the Lord in prayer. The Bible says that we are to pray for one another, to constantly continue to pray for one another. So you pray for them, and you begin to pray that they're able to let it go, and God's able to heal their life. So at this time, I want you just to, if you feel you need to come up here, I want to anoint you at all. Just come get a nail. When you grab it, just I'm pulling it up. And I'm giving it to God. So at this time, if you want, just come up the center aisle right now. Don't be embarrassed. Don't hold on to it. everyone would just stand to your feet and just begin worshiping him right now. Thank you.
and in forgiveness. We place it at your feet. you could see and this was unintentional and I just seen a while ago but as you stood here in front of the cross notice whose shadows on the cross yours that you died with Christ and this pain was given to him died to set the prisoners free. For we were crucified with Christ. We were crucified with Christ. And it's not we that live, but Him. Father, I just lift up every person in the sound of my voice right now. Father, I thank you that you sent your Son to die on the cross 2,000 years ago not only for the forgiveness of my sins, but also for the healing of my heart. Father, as we came up here today, Father God, symbolically, we're handing you all the hurt that we have in our lives. Father, I just pray that you help each and every one begin the healing and forgiving process in their life. Father, we're not saying that what people done to us or to them is okay. But Father, as your son did on the cross, we say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So Father, we speak peace to everyone here today. We speak healing, that we could be made whole. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen. Amen.
Amen. God bless you. We love you. God, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. God is good all the time. God bless you. Walk in your new freedom today.